Hey guys, this is Mom of Two Wife of One and welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Welcome if this is your first time. I am Mom of Two Wife of One. I am a blogger. I'm an editor. I am a content creator. I'm an author. I'm obviously a mommy and I'm a wife. And on this channel, I do a little little mixture of some things but one of the things that a lot of people come here for is i do a review and recap of married at first sight we are on season 14 we had the premiere episode last night we got to see our first wedding got to see the couples the singles rather meet each other and yeah it was the kickoff to the new season well, some of you who are not aware of married at first sight let me give you the rundown this is a show on lifetime it's a reality show where they go to different cities this season they are in boston it's actually their second time being in boston they were in boston four years ago for season seven i believe and they go to a city three experts who ask people you know do you want to get married people fill out this really long survey and then they narrow all the applicants down from probably hundreds to about 50 to the final 10 and then out of that 10 they match them up with the person they're going to marry the kicker is that you don't get to know the person you're going to marry. You don't get to know their name or anything about them, what they look like or anything, until you get to the altar. Hence the name, Married at First Sight. So last night was the season four, season 14 rather, uh, premiere. And we got to see our first wedding. So last night, I don't know why they do this. The premiere was three hours long. Who has time for that? And then out of three hours, we only get one wedding. It, like a lot of it was drawn out unnecessarily. I didn't quite understand it. I'm like, I know we're building the hype and everything, but you could have done this in two hours. Or if you're going to keep it at three hours, at least give us two or three weddings. I just thought that was unnecessary, but what do I know? So we got to meet all of the singles. So first couple we'll start with is Lindsay and Mark. Mark has an interesting story because he's the first person, at least in Married to First Sight history that I'm aware of, that had applied for the show the first time they were in Boston four years ago, and they were unable to find him a match, but he did it again four years later for this season, and they found him a match, and now he's on the show. His personality, he seems grounded, but his personality seems like a very hyperactive frat boy like he's a very i don't want to say typical boston person because i don't know a lot of people from boston but like the accent is there and he's very like a bro kind of person and just really hyped up like yeah mark the shark we're gonna do this yeah. like he's extremely in your face and Lindsay seems to really pair well with him he she is extremely she seems likable but she seems a little out there. There's no filter when she's speaking. She's very much like, yeah, 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 yeah. So when they met at the altar, normally it's a little nerve wracking. And you're a little like, oh my gosh, hi, I'm Lindsay. Hi, I'm Mark. Oh, it's nice to meet you. They were like, oh, hey, how are you? Though? What's your last name? Oh, that's my little snap's name. All right. This is like they were just acting like they have known each other forever. So I like that their energy matches each other. But I can see that it get I can see it getting tiring after a while because I was exhausted just watching them. But even before they get to the wedding, they tell their respective family members and friends about the fact that they got matched and they're getting married in two weeks. So I got the impression that their families and friends were very happy and excited for them, very supportive. The situations with their family is very interesting. Lindsay is very close with her father and her brother. But her mother is in a estranged relationship and her mother is not, not on board with the wedding and just not really a big part of her life and she admitted that she hasn't even seen her mother in three years. And then with Mark's situation, his mother is in rehab and he, I don't know what she's in rehab for, but I got the impression that she's it's like physical rehab, but I think there's some substance abuse there as well, I believe. And then his grandmother has dementia, so he cares for both of them. His dad died, and so for him, and I think he's an only child as well, so his family are really his friends. And one thing they have in common, and I, anybody who knows me personally, have a huge fear of cats. Not a big fan. They don't do it for me. Get them out of here. These people, this couple, between the two of them, they have five freaking cats. That's a lot. Even if they were dogs, that would just be a lot. That would be too much. 
but it works, I guess, because he's like, you know, I have these three cats and every woman I've met, they've been allergic to cats. And so great. Now with a woman who has cats, she's not allergic. This is great. The thing though, there are a couple, I'm going to say red flags, kind of sort of red flags from her perspective. A year ago, she was engaged to be married. And then five days before the wedding, her fiance called it off. And granted, there's no specific time for you to get over a relationship. There's no specific set time for you to get over like humiliation like that. But a year seems like, mm, are you really ready to get married again? Or is it a matter of, oh, I really want to be married. I'm going to sign up for the show as opposed to I'm ready to try again or I'm ready to give my heart again. I just almost feel like She's getting married just because she just wants to be a married person. And it doesn't matter who it is. It was supposed to happen a year ago. I'm supposed to be married today. Let's get this show on the road. So I, that makes me like, mm, I don't know. And then with Mark, he seems like a nice guy. But with all the responsibilities that he has with taking care of his mom, taking care of his grandmother, he's a regional manager of three separate gyms. And he, you know, has his own stuff going on. Fitting a woman into that may be a little difficult especially taking care of the mother and the grandmother thing it's not a bad thing that he does that but it's already hard enough if you're a woman dating a man who has all these responsibilities you have to be comfortable with the idea of not always coming first and even if his intention is that i'm going to put you first because you are my girlfriend or you are my wife his intention can be great all day long but if something pops up with one of those other responsibilities that he has there's no guarantee he's going to be able to put you where you feel you deserve to go. And you have to be a certain type of woman to be okay with that, to understand the situation and to stick in there to help him with the stuff he has going on, as opposed to being on the sidelines, feeling neglected and kind of looking spoiled. So Lindsay seems like a person who is a caregiver. She seems excited about the idea. So I don't know, you know, we'll have to see what happens with that. But I think so far, they were the only couple we saw get married last night. So I think so far, I think their energies match up well with each other at this state, right? They're both nervous and excited and really, really happy. So the energies mesh well. I don't know how either of them are when they're upset when they're hungry, when they're bored, when they're tired. So I don't know what the energy looks like there, but at least when they're excited, the energy seems to be pretty evenly matched. But again, I can see at some point them getting on each other's nerves. And I will say that one of my favorite people from last night's episode that was not one of the couples, I haven't figured out who my favorite wife or husband is yet, but I really liked Lindsay's dad. I felt like he kept it really real with her. He's very excited for her. But he basically was like, yeah, my biggest advice for you is that you need to put a filter on your mouth. You need to really think before you speak. You need to not speak in anger. And her brother said the same thing. Like, you just kind of let stuff fly and you don't really think about the consequences. You don't think about how the other person is going to be impacted or affected. And as a married person, you have to take those things under consideration, which I think is interesting because this isn't a person who a year ago, this is a person who a year ago was engaged to be married and planning her wedding and five days away from her wedding. So did she not get that same advice then? Or did she like not care then? Like I'm very curious as to them giving her this advice gives me the impression that she is still like this, that she didn't alter or try to alter anything from her first relationship, which was supposed to be a marriage. So I think that that's kind of interesting. Don't really know what that means, but I don't know. So I'll give my early predictions on who I think is going to at least say yes on decision day. I don't know about long term yet because I'm still learning everyone's personality. But I will say for decision day, I'll say that Lindsay and Mark will say yes. Pastor Kyle said something very interesting. He said these are two people who are caretakers and they're used to just caring for other people but neither of them have ever had or been in a position where people are caring for them. And I think they're both ready to let somebody care for them and to, you know, they both have a lot of love to give, I feel like. And I think as long as Lindsay takes her dad's advice under consideration, 
She's careful with, not even careful with the things she says. She speaks with intention to be heard, not necessarily to cut him down. She allows him to get his point across. She is selective with the way she phrases things. And I think both of them need to be vulnerable enough to allow somebody to care for them and allow somebody to be there for them. Then I think they could possibly be okay. So I'm going to say that Lindsay and Mark are going to make it as a couple. Now, the next couple is Alyssa and Chris. They were both pretty boring to me. I didn't get a lot out of them. I didn't get a good read on them. One thing with Chris I thought was interesting is that everybody else told their family and their friends that they're doing the show and I'm going through the process. Chris didn't tell his mother anything. So he told her on camera that, oh, by the way, I signed up for this show. I've gone through the process and I'm getting married in two weeks. And I know if I'm a mother, don't be springing nothing on me like that. Don't spring it on me like that. Definitely don't do it in front of cameras. Like, no, this is a huge life decision. You better talk to me about it before. Not even talk to me about it because you need my permission because it's not that. You're a grown man. But at the end of the day, like, just give me that courtesy of saying, Mom, I'm thinking about doing this thing. It's a really big deal. I just want to know your opinion on it. How do you feel about getting a new daughter-in-law or getting a new son-in-law? Just talk to me about it. And I thought that that was, I didn't really like the way he did that. I thought that was really trifling. And, you know, his mother made a good point. She was like, so what happens if she doesn't like you? And what happens if you don't like her? And he was like, oh, that's a good point. Hmm. So I don't know. I didn't get a, I don't say a good read. I just didn't really get a read on him at all. Like I just, he was just seemed kind of whatever. Nothing stood out to me about him. Nothing was great or bad. It was like, okay, your name is Chris. That's nice. And then Alyssa was kind of the same way. One thing I did notice is that she, compared to the other bride, she seems a lot more reserved, a lot more quiet at the bachelorette party because that's the other thing which i don't know if i, I want to get you guys opinion on that how do you guys feel about having joint bachelor parties and joint bachelorette parties because they've been doing this for several seasons now where they'll have all five women and all five men have their parties together with their friends so it's not like a ton of people but each person may have like two or three people there and you do all of this stuff together i don't know how i feel about that i think for me my personality if something's supposed to be about me, I'm the one getting married or I'm the one having a birthday or whatever, I need to have it to be about me. I don't necessarily love being the center of attention, but if the whole point is to celebrate me, then I don't want to share that spotlight. It's supposed to be my day. I'm getting married. And granted, everybody else getting married too. That's cute. That's nice. But if my friends are there for me, then I want it to just be about me. So I don't think I'm cool with that idea. Um, and at the bachelorette party, all the other girls... They're taking shots, they're dancing, you know, they're having fun like you do at a bachelorette party. And Alyssa was just kind of in a corner with her friend sitting down with them, just talking quietly. And it's not a bad thing. Everybody celebrates differently. Not everybody is really turned up like that. So again, it's not bad at all that that's, you know, how she was. But I know that Lindsay was giving her a lot of shade because Alyssa just wasn't participating. And, and I think that unfortunately for the show she was probably forced into sharing her bachelorette party and forced into you know and that's another hard thing about sharing an experience like that everybody doesn't view celebrating the same way some people like the idea of oh let's go to the club and let's get drunk other people are like no i want a nice bridal shower with some finger sandwiches and i want some gifts and i want to be chilled or whatever everyone has their own idea so i don't think it was fair necessarily to force them all into doing one thing because for Alyssa, the thing that they planned just wasn't her thing but she had to show up because she's on the show so i kind of hated that for her but other than that only other thing i know about her is that she loves animals and she rescues dogs which i think is really sweet and it shows for personality that she is a very caring person but yeah she was just boring like she was boring chris was boring i didn't really pick up anything else from their personalities it's like oh okay that's nice and that was pretty much it. So I will say for them, I don't know, because I didn't really read anything different. I'll just say, yeah, they're going to make it. No idea. We'll just say a listening person are going to make it. And let me see, what's the other couple? It's five couples. They're two black couples. I actually want to save them for last. 
And then I talked about two white couples. Oh, Steve and Noy. So Steve is, I think he's the oldest, he's 37. Steve does not seem like a bad guy. His family is supportive. They're very excited for him. He's the last of his siblings to get married. Every single sibling he has, even his younger sister, they're all married. They all have children. They have families. And he's wanted this for a really long time. The thing with Steve, though, and my husband, who does not watch the show, but occasionally he'll, like, hear snippets of me talking about it. He was like, why would they have anybody on the show that does not have a job? Now, Steve, unfortunately, was impacted by the pandemic. He was laid off, so he currently is not gainfully employed, which isn't his fault, obviously. But my husband had a point. He was like, I feel bad for his future wife because it's not like it's a matchmaking thing where you're dating somebody. And it's like, oh, he doesn't have a job. Mm, I don't know if I want to date him. And you kind of have that choice. She's not going to find out he doesn't have a job until they're already married. Because if you don't meet until you get to the altar, when you're at the altar, you're not having a full-blown conversation. You're exchanging your vows, getting to know the person, kind of, sort of, kissing them, maybe, maybe not. And then you go off and have your alone time. And then in your alone time, you have conversation. And that's when she's going to find out he's unemployed. But at that point, it's too late because she's already married. So it is kind of messed up that she doesn't get to know that ahead of time i don't know if i agree with him not ha him not being able to be on the show at all because it doesn't seem like he is an unemployable kind of person he just happened to have gotten laid off and he is in the process of looking for a job and he seems very confident that he's not going to be without a job for long but obviously we have no way of knowing that so i, I do think that situation is kind of interesting actually like Steve I feel like probably because he's older he's very level-headed he has thought long and hard about what he wants and what he doesn't want Noi I like I think Noi seems very sweet and quiet but she said you know my alter ego is noisy where I'm a little more life of the party and I like to dance and I like to wear my wigs and I like to have fun so I think that Noi has that perfect combination of being sweet and being nice and you know i'm gonna help you out i'm gonna love on you whatever but then on the other side when we go out hey i'm gonna turn up and i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna do that the only thing with noah is that she admits that she's very shy and it takes her a while to really be comfortable enough to let her guard down when she's talking to someone now that a lot of people are like that but a lot of people aren't thrust into a marriage for eight weeks so the question will be, is eight weeks enough time for her to let her guard down? And if it's not, you know, that's a hard decision for Steve to have to make on decision day. Do I want to stay married to this person with the hopes that they'll open up at some point? Or is this pretty much all I'm going to get, which may not be enough for me? And do I want to continue to do this? So it's hard to decide. I'm going to say, I think early on, I'm going to say everyone, I don't say everyone's going to make it. No, there's one couple I don't think is going to make it. But I'll say that Noy and Steve will make it if Steve gets a job soon and if Noy lets her guard down and kind of lets him in. Um, I want to talk, who Lord, about, let's do Michael and Jasmina. They're a black couple. I think Michael and Jasmina both come from really big families. She is one of nine. He's one of, I believe, six. He had a brother that passed away. But his mother is gone, his grandmother is gone, I believe his dad is gone, and he has four older sisters. And one thing I love is that when he told them, I got matched, I got, I'm getting married, you kind of expect the older sibling to be like, oh, well, she can't take care of you like we can, and blah, blah, blah. But they were so genuinely excited for him. And one of his sisters was like, you know, it is going to be a little weird knowing that he's going to have that priority now that he never had before. But hey, we love this woman already. We support his decision. And I was like, I love that. That already they're prepared to kind of come second to the wife. They're already preparing themselves for that, which I think is a beautiful thing. So I love the relationship that Michael has with his sisters. My concern with Michael is that he is not good at letting people in and Jasmina has made it clear that communication is very very important to her and again with this accelerated process either people will be inspired by the fact that they only have eight weeks and they let their guards down early 
or they'll feel the pressure to let their guards down when they're not ready and they'll just make them retreat into their shell even more. So you never know how people are gonna to react to that timeline. And with Michael, I guess we'll just have to find out if he's gonna be willing to talk to her or if he's just still gonna be kind of, you know, buttoned up because he's just kind of nervous to let somebody into his heart. And also, so I have this thing where a lot of people that they get on the show are people who are like, yo, I've been doing all this and all this and I'm ready. I'm ready to, you know, be with the person. And I feel like with him, he was like, you know, I'll date a woman for a little bit, but I'll find one little flaw and then I'm gone. So this, you know, process forces me to stay. It's like, is that a good reason though to do the process? To be in a position where you're forced to stay with this person? I don't know if that's the best reason. Like, I feel like that's something you need to talk to a therapist about if you aren't able to stay past seeing that first flaw. That's, I mean, especially if that's a natural pattern for you, I, I feel like a therapist needs to help you with that. I don't think the show is going to cure you of that. And I don't know if that's a good enough reason to sign up for Married at First Sight because it's forcing you to stay and forcing you to see the good in somebody it's like mm, I don't know how I feel about that so I felt a little weird about that um with Jasmina I like Jasmina I like that she knows what she wants she's like I need a man that is emotionally available Michael I don't know I think he wants to be that doesn't mean that he will be and it's going to require her to be very patient with him and it's going to require him to be brave signing up for this process is already brave but he needs to be even more brave when it comes to being in a relationship so i'm gonna say i feel like i'm on the fence with them i'll say yes for decision day i don't know if beyond that but it depends on how much work they're both willing to put in now katina and Elajuan, i'm saying no on decision day for them Elajuan is not ready to be married what i hate is when they get these people who are like you know i've had my time of dating and i'm tired of dating and i'm just ready to be married and you know let's go because my past relationships you know i was a cheater i lied i was sewing my oats i did all this stuff but the past two years i've been working on myself and i'm not saying that he hasn't been working on himself and i'm not going to say that he hasn't changed because I, who am i to judge i believe that people can change so it's not that at all but it's the fact that you have never had a steady stable relationship you're ready for a relationship that is steady and you're ready to mature and you know grow up that is all well and good and i commend you for that i don't believe though that your first stable relationship should be a marriage you don't know how to operate in a relationship so you need to go through the process of actually dating people to see what it's like, to see what it's like to stick around, to be yourself, to be intentional with dating. That is where your first relationship needs to come from. Your first relationship should not be a marriage because you don't know how to operate in a relationship, period. But operating in a marriage is like 10 times as hard, especially when it's a person who's a stranger. So I feel like that's unfair to Katina to pair her up with someone who doesn't even have that track record of long relationships. And Katina, a person who has been cheated on a bunch of times and fidelity is very important to her, I don't think it's fair also to pair her with someone who has a history of cheating. Granted, he said that he's changed. That's all well and good. We'll have to see, obviously. But knowing that he has that history... I don't know if that's going to pair well with her and all the brokenness she experienced from men who have cheated on her in the past. So I don't think this was the best match and I don't think he's good for the show. I don't think he's a bad person either, but I do think a lot of the things he stresses he wants are very surface level superficial things. It's adamant and it is non-negotiable that the woman can cook. He wants it to be pretty. He wants to be able to have fun with her. He wants to be able to like take her to the strip club. And it's like, okay, those are all very nice things. But I didn't get a lot of depth from him, at least last night, about what he's actually looking for in a wife. And his sister-in-law said it best. She's like, Elijah is a good person, but whoever marries him, my advice to her, be very patient. Be ready to ignore him when he says ignorant things. And, you know, just kind of hang in there. And that's basically all the advice she could give. Because Lajuan seems like he's, you know, he's a very attractive guy, works out, has a bunch of tattoos, blah, 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 blah. He has his own house. He seems, at least on the career level, he seems to be very successful, stable in that area. And yes, maybe you are ready to have somebody into your world and be a part of that. That doesn't mean it has to be a wife. So I don't think he was a good fit for the show at all. 
I think that it's okay to want to have a woman to want a woman that cooks for you and you have a hot meal waiting for you at home. A lot of people may think that's an antiquated idea, and I think it is, but it depends on your relationship. If he's paired with somebody who has that same idea of I've always wanted to be the woman who cooks for my man and makes sure he has something to eat when he comes in the house. If you have a woman that shares that idea, then it's not antiquated. You found your match, so that's a good thing. So hopefully Katina's on board with that. But just some of the other stuff, I, I don't know how much they're going to get past that. So I I don't know. I really don't know, too. I'm going to assume that they're going to say no on decision day, that Katina for sure will say no on decision day, and that Elijah Wan will see how hard marriage is and realize, yo, this is harder than it should be. I don't want to do this either. That is my early prediction. But like I said, we only had one wedding, wedding, huh, one wedding last night. I believe, hopefully, next Wednesday we'll have at least two more and then probably the final two the week after that. They're going to draw this out for a very long time. But I hope you guys enjoyed the review and recap of Married at First Sight Season 14, Episode 1. Make sure you tune in next week when I do a review and recap of Episode 2. Leave your comments below. Let me know your early predictions. Let me know if you've ever watched the show. If you, you know, what your favorite past season was. What kind of couples do you like from this season? Do you think the experts got it right or are they tripping again? Let me know. Let's converse. You know, comment down below and don't forget to like this video, share this video to other fans of the show make sure you subscribe to my channel comment click the notification bell do all those wonderful things that the youtubers say and i'll see you guys back here next week peace